Ohio Congressman and member of the House Armed Services Committee, Mike Turner, joins me. Good evening, sir. And you are hey, just back from Ukraine. Be my eyes and ears. Tell me, tell me what surprised you when you were there, because it's so different when you're there on the ground. Sure, sure. Well, a couple of things. You know, one, if you are just on the streets of Kyiv, uh, people are going about their ordinary business. People are going to, to work. They're going to shops. There are people out with their families in parks. All the while, during the day, where air sirens will, will wail, uh, you can see the evidences of the um, uh, Russian bombs, even the, um, uh, the Iranian uh, UAVs, unmanned air vehicles that include uh, weapons. Um, you can see the destruction that they're causing. And this is all part of, as it was just saying, the um, Russia's efforts to take out important infrastructure uh, in Kyiv. Uh, we stood next to the power plant in, in Kyiv and saw the buildings that had been damaged and even residential buildings where people had been killed, where Russia had been sending missiles in attempts to take out the, the power plant. Uh, this is obviously very disconcerting because it shows a, a shift. We have the atrocities that have occurred after Russia has invaded the killing of innocent people, the uh, destruction of, of housing. But now you have the attempts to take out infrastructure that, of course, will just cause more suffering for innocent people. You know, it, when you talk about the people being out on the street, when, when I was in Ukraine right after the war started in March, that's what shocked me. You know, I've been to war. I've been to wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was the weirdest thing where people were just going about their lives with the sirens wailing, as you say. This is so bizarre. All right. Um, you met with President Zelensky. What did you think about him? What was your impression of him? Well, I've met him before, and, and it was, you know, certainly reassuring to see the continued strength that he has. I mean, he really has been inspirational, not only to Ukrainians, but around the world. I think uh, the rallying point, not only of his troops and those in Ukraine who fight, but also all of the countries that are willing to provide support to Ukraine, uh, you know, is, you know, circles around the fact that this is such a strong individual. He opened his comments to us by saying that they were on the front lines of democracy, and he means that. He sees that this is not just an attack against Ukraine. Uh, this is not just that Vladimir Putin has a view of a broader Russia that goes back to you know, the area of the Iron Curtain, but that, in fact, it's an authoritarian regime that hates democracy and is at war with the West and democracy itself. All right, you're in the House Armed Services Committee now, just been there uh, to the, on the ground. Many pe many members of the Republican Party, your party, um, are opposed to you know sending money, um, or they want to put the brakes on or something else. I mean, there seems to be a divide with it. Even within you know the Democratic Party, there are probably some differences in opinion. Uh, what I, I take it you're in favor of continuing aid to Ukraine. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but right. um, yeah, what so do you say I, to those in your party who don't agree with you? Yeah, there are very, very few uh, people who don't want to continue to provide uh, aid to Ukraine. What people want, and certainly what the leadership wants, what Kevin McCarthy wants, uh, is that we end these Nancy Pelosi overly bloated bills uh, that, that spend $40 billion to spend $8 billion to Ukraine. I actually had this conversation with President Zelensky. He asked the issue of, you know, where is the support in Congress, and that, that people were raising the issue of the funds. And even he understands that it's not the aid, the dollar that's going to Ukraine, it's how many U.S. dollars does it take. For example, in addition to the bloated bill, the $40 billion bill that only $8 billion was for Ukraine itself, where we have been funding, sending weapons directly to Ukraine, humanitarian assistance we have sent to the United Nations, which, of course, they take their cut, and then they put their own bureaucracy Is together. You know, those types of wastes really are the things that people are concerned about. I I, I suspect the American people, we've always, you know, American people have been very generous, even though people have different views on how much to send or not send. But I suspect one of the things that, you know, after we look at Afghanistan and how much money was spent there and how much was not accounted for, is I'm wondering, is that what is, what is Congress doing to account for the money? If you send a dollar for a weapon, that the dollar does go for the weapon, doesn't go in somebody's pocket. I mean, you know, is there any, you know, tough oversight so that, you know, we achieve what we intend to achieve and we don't see these horrible numbers post-Ukraine? We know it's absolutely, I think, the reason why this election in November is going to be so important. The way to get to that accountability, obviously, is a shift in Congress. Uh, the, the debacle of Afghanistan, the billions of dollars that were wasted as the Biden administration ran for the exits and left equipment behind that today. Well, there was money uh, the spent. Taliban there was spent during. There was money spent during the Bush 43 administration. I mean, this, I mean, this was an 18 year, lots of money was spent in Afghanistan that was unaccounted for. I mean, I don't think you can lay, I think it's bipartisan la turning, looking the other way in terms of how it was spent. 
Um, so well, I'm not I think sure the I think issue, though, fair. really is, I mean, the, the Biden administration said, we're not going to run for the exits. They did, and they abandoned equipment that's in the hands of the Taliban. So it's, it's one issue of accountability, you know, waste and misuse of funds and making certain that that doesn't occur. The other is where you just abandon uh, money and, and uh, equipment in, in Afghanistan, which, which is just, you know, it's, it's shameful what the Biden administration did. All right, well, well, we'll continue this conversation sometime later. I hope, uh, I mean, actually, I'd like this war to be over so we didn't have to continue it, but uh, yeah, I'm it afraid we will be. have to. Congressman, Congressman Turner, thank you, sir. Thank you, Greta.